Hi everyone, we are about to get started with the new episode of The Money Talks. Just waiting for. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Hi, Jasmeet. How are What's you? What's up? What's up? All good, Eddie. What's up? Uh, all good. Are you nicely home quarantined? Uh, no, I I'm actually going to work. So I just came back, took a shower, uh, came on a call with you. Oh, nice, nice, good. I'm glad to have you on board. So, uh, you know, maybe I should tell I should tell the audience a little bit about uh, about about you before before we get started. So, guys, everyone who has already joined in, uh, welcome back. This is episode two of the Money Talks, and uh, last week we had Harsh Shaf of Find. Just me, you were on the show as well, and thankfully we got a chance to invite you while we were on episode number yeah. one, and you agreed, and and now you're yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, really, really excited to uh, talk a little bit about your journey. Uh, but so let me get started. Uh, Jasmeet, you uh, obviously uh, have been a founder now, coming on five years almost. Four years. Four years. Okay. Yeah. So still, still pretty young. Still pretty, pretty yeah. early in the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but just, just to get, let you guys know, uh, I've known Jasmeet now since 2016. We invested in their seed in a seed round, uh, and then we've gone on to do two more rounds in the company. Uh, the company has recently raised three million dollars from a clutch of investors between India and China. Yep. And uh, of of late, uh, you know, Jasmeet, uh, because he cannot travel to China anymore, has been spending a lot more time in India. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, Jasmeet, maybe give a little bit of uh, of a brief to the audience about what Kutlu does what your role yeah. is, you know, and, and your journey so far. Sure. So uh, what Kutlu does is, uh, you know, we live in a, uh, a country where there's a lot of offline stores and uh, that's where probably we buy a lot of the products from. Uh, so what Kutlu does is something very, very simple, but yet something very impactful. Uh, we help small shopkeepers, individual sellers sell online within seconds through a mobile phone. And when I say within seconds, it's literally within seconds. Uh, so small shopkeepers and, you know, and also because of the COVID situation, uh, all the shops are shut. Uh, and dhanda nahi ho ra, right? I mean, they want to sell the product, but dhanda bande. Online to sell on Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal, it's a task. So how do you sell online? Uh, so well, uh, that's where we come in. We help us digitize small stores, uh, take all the inventory online and help them sell via a bargain and buy model so that people like you and me, your, your favorite Gupta stores is, uh, you know, selling to somebody in New Delhi <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's making money. And uh, so that's what we be trying to do. We be trying to digitize the economy, empower small sellers and create an impact, uh, you know, in the country. That's what Kutlu does. It's interesting that you, you would say Delhi and, and Gupta ji, because I believe you have, a, you have some co-founders from Delhi. So maybe you could uh, yeah. just introduce them. Yeah. One of my co-founders, Mahima, she's from Delhi, and uh, she brings in the Delhi flavor in the company. I she's am. She's a fo pure... she's a force of nature. Oh, she is. She is with red hair. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so she 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 tames everyone in the organization. Uh, I think uh, I am like I am the more uh, you know free going one in the organization. So I think uh, it balances out uh, you know very very nicely. So so yeah, I think it's a, it's a good combination. So guys, uh, I'll, I'll give a little interesting couple of tidbits about Jasmeet. Jasmeet is the only founder, and I call him the Shankar Mahadevan of founders, because uh, I remember his pitch, his first pitch. He literally gave the entire pitch. I think it was about five or six minutes. Uh, he gave the entire more. pitch in, in, was it more? It's well, well more. it seems like five we, minutes because... We, we, had because like, uh, we had like some 27 slides. And I went yeah, and you the went through them like... So, yeah. so guys, he didn't take a breath. He, this guy did yeah. not take a breath for 27 slides straight. And I remember at the end of it, I, I, felt, I felt so much pity for the guy. I thought he was going to pass out. So yeah. I actually took a bottle of water and handed it over to him. I said, before the Q&A, please have a bottle of water. Yeah. So, you know what, Jasmine, let's talk about that moment. What was it like? I, I believe it was, it was your first pitch. It was my first ever pitch. And the funniest part was the business presenting right after us had the same idea. So I had to kind of, you know, make an impact. And uh, I had to go, you know, my whole idea was how do I, you know, set up next guy at the same time, you know, kind of uh, creating an impact in our own pitch. And uh, we're young founders. So I think that's something that we try to, uh, you know, come out through a pitch. And that's, that's probably why. And I was nervous. Of course, I was shit nervous. Uh, because uh, this is the <laughs> first time, you know, you, you probably have seen a lot of Shark Tank before. 
so in shark tank you know you go in and stuff like that but this was like shark tank in real time so uh, i think uh, that, so i was very nervous and uh, so i was like yaar main jo yaad kar ke aaya tha before i forget let me just <laughs> go on get on <laughs> so think, but you know you know what <laughs> so i saw you two years later in hong kong right and we we hung out the night before your this this the time when i saw this pitch Uh, yeah. I remember we were up till like till almost two a.m. right, and uh, uh, and you gave almost the exact same infectious energy, exact same pitch. I was like, this. I, I remember taking a photograph, and I was like, this guy hasn't changed, right? Yeah. So, so are you still pitching the same way to VCs today? Like, no, are they offering no, you bottles no. of water? <laughs> no, I think uh, I think I've, I've I've changed a lot since then. Now I because now like like I'm pitching to international investors, uh, and especially the Chinese investor, they don't pick up English that fast. Yep. So now, uh, so I, I'll tell you like, uh, so you know, in my last, uh, so SOSV is one of our investors, right? And they also prepare you for a big demo day. So yep. I still remember that uh, one of my uh, investors was like, "Hey man, you go too fast. Imagine that, um, you know, you you just walked in a in a room which is uh, uh, full of uh, you know a, a lot of people and they're looking at you and the moment you." Uh, speak, you know, they're gonna come kill you. So how do you whisper to someone and you want to save your life? Hmm. So that's the speed that you have to get to. So I think that is when I learned, like going like, "Hi, my name is Just Meat, and I am the founder of Cool Truth." So I think I I went like that after that. Uh, but I think it, it's 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 a it's a process of evolution. I think uh, uh, you know you start very raw, and then experiences people and you know people that have groomed you, you know, someone like you. They they change you through the journey, so I think it's it's a part of that. But I and I, I evolute your date, right? I think I think your seed round was about fifty lakhs. We remember there was just uh, there it was, was just... it was it was about seventy lakhs and seventy uh, lakhs. Oh yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, was... I'm, I'm sorry, I I didn't count the uh, the the yeah. clutch of angels, but I believe yeah. the largest two investors was was yeah. Kapil Kapil and yeah, Kapil and Kapil Kapil and Kapil. Artha. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and you know I, I I know you you struggled a lot to get that seed round together. In fact, I think even the next round after that was a, a bit of a struggle. But then you got SOSV on, uh, you got yeah. SOSV on board, and then you, you know, the, then you got, uh, then you got the cash Chinese B two B, yeah, yeah, and cash bus on board, and then recently what Amoeba Capital and yeah. a clutch of other investors. So let's yeah. talk about the journey, right? Let's talk about, you know, what was it like? What was the difference between raising that first round and let's say raising three million? Was was the effort uh, any more, any less? You know, and for some of the people that are over here today, you yeah. know, they, they must be wondering like. Is it easier to raise seven? The first seventy was it easy, or was it easier to raise the last twenty-two, twenty-two crores? I think it's it's pretty much the same effort. Uh, I think it's really the okay. Remains the same. Uh, I think what changes is uh, uh, is is the stakes in the game, and uh, you know your uh, ability as a founder to talk sense. Uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a seed round, you can show your energy, show the idea, and get through it. uh you know but when you come into later stage funding i think uh, you really have to cut down into pieces explain what you're doing uh you know get more into details i think that changes uh you know largely but uh, the pitch remains the same i mean you 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 are you're a salesman you you're selling a story you're selling a dream uh you know you've been a door to door salesman so i know uh, like probably <laughs> you know what it feels like uh so i mean but you know that's the key part right you're, you're actually yeah. trying to sell a story and i think i yeah. think for some of the founders that are on here maybe could you just elaborate like what do you mean like cuz for many people it's like listen when i'm pitching the investor needs to get what i'm doing right and yeah. he needs to understand yeah. what i'm doing and he yeah. needs to you know believe in the story but yeah. what you're essentially saying listen that's not doesn't matter if at the end yeah. of the day remember you're selling them something which is yeah. so maybe just talk about that so i think uh, you know uh for every investor you so not all the investors would like the same story right so for example it's 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 the same like you go to buy a bottle of uh, say cold drink not everyone drinks pepsi not everyone drinks thumbs up so and not for the same reasons right some people might drink thumbs up for you know because they enjoy yeah. it some people drink it just because uh, they've had a heavy meal right yeah so i mean, I mean <laughs> I mean, everyone has different reasons. So I think you just need to understand. You, as a founder, I think you, gut feeling is one of the most important things. Uh, you need to, you know, kind of feel the environment, feel the room, uh, you know, feel the other person, and and figure out, yeah, ये क्या सुनना चाहता है. And mm. uh, you know, you then tell that part of your story. I mean, you don't have to always tell uh, everything, right? I mean, yeah. the whole idea is to get the next meeting. The whole idea is to get them involved in your business. Uh, the whole idea is to get them. It's not one size fits all, right? Of yeah. course. Yeah. So it's not i mean every, every investor has their motivations to be in the in the room 
yeah. and you need to cater yeah. to all of them so that's a that's a yeah. very important point i mean for, for for founders that are listening in you know it's it's not always about giving the same story to everyone sometimes you need to stress on certain parts of the story that would appeal to certain investors that may not appeal to other investors and that yeah. is so important right that you need you need to eventually remember that you're yeah. selling shares of your company and you're yeah. not selling the company itself right yep yep so, and you are and you are also you know kind of uh, uh, selling your dream uh, you know it's uh, then it just not becomes your dream it becomes everyone's dream uh, yep. so i think it's it's as good as you know getting your first few employees uh, you know your first few employees are like you know yaar ye kya hai you know then you're like you sell them that dream i still remember yep. you know there was this very very funny story that you know kind of uh, changed me and you know my team and uh, it created a big impact on us uh so i remember after we you know raised the seed round we used to work out of a small you went to that office yeah uh, yeah yeah oh yeah oh, well, it was that, that was not an office that was a go down <laughs> it was a go down that, yeah, yeah it was a where yeah, yeah so we were we were working out of that go down where aju baju sirf factories and factories hai and uh, you know i still remember uh, we had raised our pre a round from cash bus and uh, we were in the in, in the transition moment we were finding offices to move into and we hired a ui ux guy from kerala Okay, a uh, very funny story. He came all the way from Kerala to that office. He joined at like about ten a.m. in the morning. Uh, you know, we welcomed him like, "Ha, ah, bro, welcome to the team." Stuff like that. Of course, it's a very young organization. We are a very young team, so you know that culture always stays with us. Uh, I saw him in the morning. He was doing something, uh, you know, on his computer. Uh, in the like, during lunch break, uh, he's like, uh, "My lunch karke aata." He told so, some the other colleague, and the guy did not return for like. couple of hours four hours six hours uh <laughs> and uh, someone just gave him a call uh, and he's like uh, yeah where are you he's like uh, i am sorry i came with a different expectation i didn't you know think of working out of a garage i mean this is yeah. not what i wanted i i came from kerala to mumbai to be in a better place not in the same place I like, yeah i i i thought i thought i am coming to work in a tech startup and here i am yeah. in, the, in 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 the middle of you know um, people carrying stuff and it's a whole warehouse district right yeah it, it it was like a printing press company to be honest <laughs> <laughs> i remember i remember coming to that office and i was like okay i was like this is i like these founders right because yeah. that's that's what it takes sometimes yeah. it's not always yeah. awesome yeah. but i do remember coming i was i think i was i came to your office uh the new one right when you uh, guys had the, just the, got the it yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and i think it was about 7000 square feet now nice i think you can host something like uh almost yeah. 100 people how many people do you guys have right now uh, now we have almost about 75 people uh we we had 100 people until march so the okay. team kind of is now not working so but uh, that office can fit uh, you know almost like about 150 people let's uh, talk about that uh, let's talk about covid and let's talk about what the things yeah. you guys have been doing yeah. uh so obviously covid hits you, i i know you were in the middle of raising all this money and yeah. covid hit it first hit china then obviously uh, it's yeah. hit india and, and we're still going through some of the pains yeah. Yeah. but tell me uh maybe uh, a little bit about what did you know how, how did you how did you cope with the situation yeah. did it help to have some chinese investors who could give you any uh, yeah. feedback so yeah let's start with that you know obviously you got yeah. chinese backers right and there was yeah. actually some chinese capital waiting to come in uh before before all of this started so yeah. what was the kind of advice you got from them what how did it help so the funniest part of is uh, you know a part of my role involves being in china about 15 days of the month uh so i came back to india on the 16th or 17th january and uh, we didn't know that covid had already been you know spreading in china and uh, I, I, mahima was with me and we were traveling to different cities meeting new suppliers uh, you know for a b2b business and uh, we had a small office in hangzhou as well uh, so you know we were we were kind of there and we had no idea that there was this bubble which was about to burst and uh, i think uh, once we came back and we read the news and we like oh 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 i mean this this is like going to <laughs> you know go crazy and uh, the funniest part is you know i came back and i was sick and uh, and but none of us knew about covid back back then so i was <laughs> dude so... are you sure you want to talk about this i don't want bmc at your <laughs> no no now now it's now it's probably too late <laughs> so okay. uh, yeah I mean, I, I live with a mother who's sixty plus, so she's fine. So I guess everything's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, so so I think uh, it prepared us. I think what we uh, we were in constant touch because uh, some of our supplies got stuck uh, due to the COVID, and uh, you know the shipping companies weren't uh, doing it, they weren't releasing it, the, the customs weren't re- releasing it. Uh, so we figured that uh, this is probably going to be if it can uh, you know disrupt a whole country like China. 
uh, imagine it coming to India where there's uh, you know a lot of our density and everything, and it might just have a bigger impact. So we we kind of braced ourselves for impact way before, and uh, we got an idea about what 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 was going to happen. And so to you know you 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 probably you know laugh at me when I say this. Uh, we sold tomatoes, bro. We sold tomatoes. We sold uh, bananas. Wow. We sold uh, everything possible. So, so I think for COVID, what we did was we tied up with a lot of uh, you know farm to home players like Ninja Cart, Village Agro, Indus Fresh, and uh, in Bombay, Bangalore, Hyderabad, we started delivering vegetables, essentials. Uh, we 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 got in touch with a lot of our sellers who were selling uh, essential categories, and we asked them to sell more. Uh, we made selling commission free for everybody. Uh, wow! We said, you know what everyone wow. can sell you know for free online. and uh, because uh, you know apart from just running a startup or running a company at the end of the day you're doing it for india you're doing it for your own people and you're doing it for uh, you know your own economy so i think uh, you know the impact part of it really you know uh, hits me and hits the whole team uh, you know right in the heart and i think uh, what we did to kind of change the business was um, we held back on our non essential categories and we just pushed out all the essential categories and during the same time i remember seeing a lot of your uh... Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, seller acquisition was the only, only kind of a thing that we did. You know, it was just seller acquisition during that time. Get as many people to open stores. So, yeah, that's what we did. So now, obviously, things are changing, right? You now the country is reopening. What, what's happening at Kutlu today? What are you? What, what are you working on? What are you excited about? And and uh, as... yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Go. So, uh, I think uh, a lot of things are coming back. Uh, they're not hundred percent back. uh i mean uh, you know i'll say we 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 are probably about 60 70% recovered on the non essential categories our essential right. categories is in fact still growing by about 300% month on month uh, so uh if we still kept that uh, we've not uh, let that go because uh, you know uh, it times are uncertain you don't know when the next lockdown will come in again all uh, right i mean it's it's so it's too early to take a call on that uh but what we are excited about is uh, something uh, that we are doing right now So Kutlu is launching a, a video commerce platform where sellers and people can go live and sell products. Uh, through, wow! Yeah, and so you can cross post it on TikTok, cross post it on Instagram, cross post it post it on Facebook, and sell your product. So uh, we believe that uh, you know the power of people is the biggest uh, you know people uh, you know that that it is, and uh, you know. It, essentially as a company selling products to business uh, to people we uh, to consumers we want you know our sellers themselves you know to be the testimony and sell products directly to consumers and i think that is going to be a very interesting part in the indian e-commerce space uh, because no one's ever tried to do that at scale so far uh, you know and if it works out then we know if it works out <laughs> so so you know and so let's talk about uh... obviously coat root isn't doing what it started doing I mean, what it yep. started with right it's the first yep. the first coat root the coat root name came from what he, what he was saying was a fashion coat root right it's second hand yep. fashion and you guys are the only guys who are going to be doing second hand fashion and you could buy yep. like i remember i sold a bunch of my sh- shirts yeah. and yeah. and suits yeah. online you know and uh, it's pretty good actually i i remember selling a shirt for more than i bought it for i bought it in the us Uh, yeah, you're giving you're giving hacks to people. You're giving hacks to people. <laughs> yeah, and it was, uh, it, <laughs> but you know, I, it convinced me because when I sold that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that definitely, uh, I mean, it built confidence. There was people out there looking for this kind of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Now, then, and then, then let's talk about so from there. You you pivoted, and then obviously you have to pivot again, and you're pivoting again. So let's talk about all of that. Yeah. So I, I think uh, you know, you know, everything's temporary. uh you know uh i don't think that you know you can keep on doing one thing and uh you know be the best i mean that's ideal like if you can do and it's it's great to read read in books and do one thing and be the best at it uh but the world is currently changing uh you know your consumers are changing the indian landscape is changing you know the our internet users are, are changing so if everything is changing you know how can you just be doing one thing so i think uh, what happened was uh, when we were selling second hand products and when we were selling you know products of celebrities and products from the movies and stuff like that i think that was a time when we got a lot of traction but uh, there was more demand than there was supply so okay. i think uh, we we kind of figured that you know because in in the second hand space you only have one product of everything 
right? You have one size of something that you like. So how do you cater to an audience that still like ninety percent of it is still yet to come onto e-commerce? Uh, I mean, if we can't fulfill for the four percent, how can we fulfill for the rest ninety percent? So I think the evolution also came, uh, you know, by also speaking to players. Like Harsh has been one of the most impactful guys in our journey. You know, I still remember, uh, you know, going to Harsh's office and. Uh, uh you know uh, talking to him and asking him yeah bro how do you run a business uh <laughs> so you know i remember is, i remember i think i was there for the meeting oh uh, yeah you were and you in fact connected us over email i think that's that's how i met harsh i actually remember uh, we were sitting there and we got those cut fruits right and we were like wow this is how this is how you know series c funded company sort of operates yeah yeah you're absolutely right and yeah, i think 4 pm uh, all, all the employees getting fruits uh, yeah. that was pretty awesome did did, yeah. did that did that have an impact on you knowing that you know what once i get big this uh, is this one of the things i want to do i big time i think uh, you know you always imagine a picture in your head ki this is what i want to do or this mm-hmm. is who i want to become and that changes every time when you keep on growing right yeah. uh, so when I, i remember when i went to find uh, you know i i saw like everything was so process oriented and for us at that time we were just a bunch of youngsters trying to create a company so uh, i think that's something i picked from harsh that uh, you know processes you know tools uh, having a set guidelines you know it actually cleans up your system uh, you know big time so mm. uh, so i think that's what and you always look up to people like i i remember coming up to you with problems seeing yaar ab ye kaise karu and i remember that one 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 session in your office and i walked down walked out with my head down <laughs> uh, so so we, I, we, I, we learned unit economics that day Yeah, I remember that, and uh, so yeah, I mean these are these are small things that, that keep on uh, you know changing you and and carving you as as a founder, and it's it's a journey. I mean I I always say you know uh, it, there's nothing to lose, there's everything to make because right now uh, we're all in the Indian economy, you know, the landscape of technology startups. We're all still very young, so there's only one way. is to go up, go up from your so so let's take a question you know and I, there's a question from one of the one of the one of the viewers and it is yeah. like uh, what got the first set of employees to take the plunge and we obviously we talked about the whole kerala situation but uh, let's yeah. talk, you know let's see, I, i believe you had four co-founders when you guys started yeah and then and then you guys hired people and then you know they been through some of that journey so what got that first group of people to so, uh, to get going so I, i i would love to tell you guys about our first employee okay and uh, his name is mahindra uh, he is the first engineer from his village he comes wow. from a village called velok which is almost about 200 kilometers from mumbai uh, he is the first engineer from his village he was a first employee uh, that guy used to travel every day 3 hours in train come to office not office to my my home we started put out of there oh wow, uh, yeah that, yeah that's a best thing and I, i and he paid us to do that that's the funniest part he didn't take a salary at that time uh, because we were just starting up uh, but i think what what and and today that guy almost leads our tech so he's wow. one of the most paid employees in the organization as well so i think uh, you know what for the first few employees what you have to do is uh, you have to sell you know or not just sell you know it's not always about selling i think you have to make them believe in what you believe in and uh, you know that's that's probably you know and i you know it's it's always the team it's never the founders i always yeah. say you know we are the front face uh, the magic happens where you can't see it's it's not us uh so you know for, so for us i mean it's always been a collaborative effort and uh, for the first few employees you have to tell them what's in it for them uh, and the potential is what you have to explain to them like you know what and at the same time you also need to hear to them you know there are times when they have the best of suggestions and your business changes because of those suggestions you know yep. because you're not always right uh, you know as a founder you 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 make mistakes all the time and i always say you know if you have to make mistakes let's make mistakes as a team and that's fine we'll take it as a team so yeah we're good i you know and i always i agree with you that you know even as is even as this fund that i've been running for the last 18 24 months it's a it's a new venture right but what's really got us through and we've been through so many things we've been through covid yeah. we've been through one of the one of the you know founders of the company getting yeah. cancer we've been through yeah. you know a bunch of personal and and, and professional issues yeah. uh and but what's what's really been interesting is that the team has always held together and yeah. that core team if it is together then yeah. obviously it, it sort of goes out to everyone else so that's hiring that first team and making sure you got the right people on board 
the guys that are going to back you through yep. good and bad that is so important you know that's such yep. an important point for any founder who's listening in today yeah in uh, fact I'll, i'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you two stories uh, you know very quickly yep. uh yeah. one of our uh, you know again early guys uh, webhav uh, he just got hired by jio about last week uh and oh, he got hired at almost like 2x 3x what we were paying him and you know he's been with us for about 4 years and the, you know one of the reasons that you know he told me is like i'm not leaving the company uh you know or i don't want to leave the company because you know i don't like the company i love the company i want to leave the company so that i can go learn and come back and do something here again and uh you know wow. that's 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 one of the things and he's still actually working with us like as consultant uh so he's consultant consulting no the other, other guy got hired by flipkart uh, as their ui designer so the the flipkart home page that you see he's it's our ui guy who's behind it oh wow so in so, this interesting you also came from unilever right yeah, yeah, you so yeah. you came from this mnc kind of a background yeah. into 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 and starting you know getting a startup going so yeah. Just maybe, maybe uh, tell us. You know how important was it for you to actually start off with with an MNC like that? What do you look, and and what did you take from there that you yeah. think really helps in your business today? Yeah. Uh. So. So I think at Unilever, I always. So I don't know if you know the story. I was rejected at Unilever the first time I went to interview at Unilever. So I was this twenty-one-year-old boy. who went to interview at Unilever I was working at Godrej uh and I was uh, in the consumer space in Godrej I just finished my engineering I was working at Godrej it was a year I interviewed at Unilever I got rejected uh uh you know by two very senior guys that told me oh, you're just too young to be working here and I think uh, I I still remember uh, you know I called up a friend and I literally cried uh and uh, I, then I said you know what I'm going to come back and work here So for three months, I did some freelancing with Pepsi IPL. I went back again to interview at Unilever uh, through reference, and the funniest part was I was interviewing in the same room I was rejected in, and wow. I was like, "Yeah, up to which hard nigga hai nahi, jo hoga dekha jayega." So that's that's when the Punjabi <laughs> instinct kind of came in, and luckily I cracked that interview. I I went better prepared. So I this is what failure teaches you. It teaches you to be better prepared. So I was better prepared. I went better prepared for the interview. and after that what unilever taught me was uh, was it was much more than an mba it was much more it it teaches you life i think uh, the way they take care of your employees the way they teach you the basics of business uh, because at 22 i was handling uh, the brand called pairs which is which is almost a 700 crore rupee brand back then uh, and uh, for the first time it was like all alien to me uh, but uh, Uh, Unilever literally taught me, you know, like they they literally taught me. Uh, I was hanging out with the best of guys, with but you know, with IM grads, with you know, big directors. So the guy who hired me, the guy who actually just me, me, just me, yeah. just one second. Can can yeah. you get to a place where there's a little bit better network? Because you're getting uh, blurry and there's a lot of questions. People uh, can I, messaging me directly that it's getting can, a bit can blurry. Can I join? And... In, can I join in again? And... It's still blurry. Yeah, join in again. Sure. Yeah, it's still blurry. I think it. Uh, I, I don't know if you are. Okay. Yeah. Can cool. we? Yeah, good. Yeah, nice and clear. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So, yeah. So just be. Let's 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 talk about investor investors, right? Yeah. So uh, we obviously we've talked about you know having your different set of investors, but can you tell me what what was a, what was an interesting role or what was what, how important was the role of that seed investor? Uh, I know Kapil spent a lot of time with you. Still does. Uh, Still does. Yeah, and you know Anuj, who actually interned with Artha for a bit, also spent yeah. a lot of time with you. Uh, and and you know we we've, we've had a bunch of conversations. Yeah. So yeah. tell me, like, and now you've got these Chinese investors, you've got SOSV on board. What what have you taken from each set of investors that has helped you build who took to where it is today? I think uh, you know every investor is like a bridge to the next step. uh and i think that's the role that every investor needs to play so i still remember you know uh, like the first investors you couple sir uh you know you guys taught us the basics of business you know of running a startup you know what is unit economics do you understand your own unit economics i still remember that conversation uh do you understand your own business so i think uh, what the first inv- investor teaches you is to actually get the basics of business right uh you know create an organization at some level and uh, then the next set of investors that come in they actually help you scale uh they so you know it, you can always say that uh, the first investor ha- helps you sow the seeds uh the next investors water the crops 
like what is the seed and the next one you know help you cut the crops so i think it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's always that kind of a you know phenomena and uh, and and always i think you know you need to have a very open relationship with your investor you know it's like an open relationship uh you know uh and you need to be honest about you know if you have any problems or if you have uh you know any opportunities and i think that really helps uh you know being uh, open to investors always helps and always every investor has a different kind of a flavor like i know what anirudh is great at i know what kapil sir is great at i know what uh, you know amiba guys are great at so as a founder you also need to get those things you know uh, you know out of your investor because it is always it's like a marriage you know we're married we just stay apart uh but uh, you know we do can ask you know things from each yeah, other you, you, you know you know what your mother's good for and you know what your wife is good for i get your point yeah, all yeah. all the married founders out there yeah 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 pretty much okay uh, but so we we have we got we've got a question right uh, and uh, so one of them is from vrushal the question is how did you handle rejection from investors yeah i think uh, in that case i think I, i handled a lot of rejections after my seed round i didn't handle a lot of rejections earlier on uh, so i thought you know fundraising was really easy matlab yaar itna simple hai you know it was that uh, but then i think when you when when the stakes get starts getting higher i think uh, rejection is a part of the process uh and every and you don't need 100 people to say yes to you you just need one or two people to say yes to you so uh you know so rejection is a part of the process and it's same like you know you like a girl uh but uh, she's not going to date you because of course she doesn't like you that much but you keep on trying right <laughs> until you yeah. get a girl <laughs> so it's 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 and or similarly for a girl to get a boy like that she likes so i think it's it's exactly that kind of a thing the only difference is that your it's it's not love it's business so uh, but I, i remember that i mean to 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 your example right you were you were you were trying to get these chinese investors a few years back yeah. you're facing a ton of issues i remember we had in, having a conversation he said listen i'm going to go camp out in china for 30 days yeah. and i'm not I, i'll either come without the investment or we're going to start yeah. this company now yeah. right yeah. and uh, 30 days 30 days later you came back with money yeah. right and, and and with a lot of experience so maybe just talk about that so that yeah. you know uh, founders like rushal can understand the kind of uh, Yeah. perseverance it takes to convince investors yeah yeah i think it's uh, it's not a one day journey i mean uh, you know uh, what do you see in the media what do you see as a product uh, i mean there there goes a lot behind it i mean there is there are nights where you can't sleep because oh shit app nahi chal raha oh shit ye issue aa gaya oh shit that. so you know these are as a founder it's not always the big things that matter it's always the smaller things that matter. how we got interesting uh because there were 16 startups that went to china and i still remember yes. the night before uh, i went to china i met kapil sir and uh, i told kapil sir yeah i'm paying so much for the tickets you know i don't think we should because uh, you know i can save that money invest in the company and he's like you know what uh, if you raise money that's great if not go take a vacation uh, don't stress yourself and i i think mahima and i went with the same intention but what we did there was something uh, very very uh interesting and this is something i i always tell other founders raising funds yep so we went to the indian let's embassy. talk about that i remember you yeah. had to edit your presentation let's talk about that part yeah so we went to the indian embassy and there were 16 startups sitting in beijing uh you know i was probably one of the most uh, least expected to raise money from there because of the business that we were doing uh and there was benny chen sitting on the on the podium uh, and he's the guy who invested in paytm so he was telling everyone that you know someone asked him a question why did you invest in paytm uh you know he said you know what the moment i walked into paytm's office i knew i was going to invest in them uh, and uh, someone asked him how he's like the moment i entered uh, you know paytm there was a on the right side there was something written as uh, 500 million by 2020 will transact online using paytm and that was vision he said i did not invest in the company i invested in the vision and uh, you know we looked at ourselves and we said yaar our slide doesn't even have a vision so let's create a vision right now <laughs> so i mean as a founder, investors need to know your vision it's as simple as that i mean he needs to know what is he investing in he's not just investing in people he's investing in what you are going to create i mean of course you are a means to that so uh, i think that night what we did was we went to a hotel bar and there was a guy who could speak, speak english and chinese the first thing we we did was uh, we changed our whole presentation into chinese uh, and uh, we knew because in the first day we knew that not a lot of people spoke english here 
and this is the first time i was going to china and uh, so we worked the whole night we made our team stay back we changed the whole presentation the next day when we presented uh, i think out of the 16 startups we were the only one that got money so i think uh, this is one thing that you know always makes an impact is just be smart be on your, you have to be street smart you don't have to be you know a techy or like really intelligent or like a cat student rank number 1 no you could be just like an average 50 percentile kind of a student and still do wonders you know the the business world doesn't care about your degree it cares about how you survive so i think that's important yeah. whether you have the tenacity to tenacity to stay there yeah right and exist so yeah. so another question that we have is did you reject any investor ever and oh yes we did yes. have you ever rejected investment from an investor oh uh, yes we have and I why think- I think uh, it, like recently, I mean, we had a couple of t- other term sheets, uh, and uh, you know, probably with the valuation that was a little higher. Uh, but uh, I think what we did was uh, we looked at uh, you know what was the value the investors getting. It's not so. I always t- tell uh, you know everyone that when you reach a certain stage, uh, you need to understand that investors are are investing in your business after the seed round, not just you as a founder. So if you've created a decent enough business. you don't have to act you know very pricey but you do have to act a little pricey because uh, you know it it's just like the founders community same as the investors community you know people are like ha ye to mere paas bhi aaya tha acha ye to mere paas bhi aaya tha so don't go to everybody you know just right. do very very targeted uh, you know kind of uh, you know uh, investor reach out and uh, not a spray and pray model yeah i mean i think the, that does not work anymore because uh, uh, the world is such a small place and everyone's connected and everyone knows ki kon kya kar raha hai and stuff like that so uh, i always believe that you know just see what the investor brings on the table for for me i remember uh, you know uh, when i when when you know luckily when we got you on board in this case it was the other way around <laughs> you actually selected us so uh, i think we remember that uh, you know you had a lot, lot of big portfolios behind your uh, you know investments and i and i think you know one of the first conversations uh, i had with mahima and the team was like how do we leverage this you know there's this guy with a lot of connections how do we leverage this so i think uh, you know you also have to you know think ki matlab what is the benefit and what is the learning you can get from the other investor and take a call accordingly there's one more question before we go to rapid fire yeah uh, the question is uh, what is more important the right investor or the investment uh it depends on the stage that you are so i would say in an early stage any money is money man uh at a later stage uh, then that <laughs> the color of money is green once it goes yeah i mean any money is money it doesn't matter it comes from whoever so uh, i think uh, that's the, at the early stage i mean any money is money you know you're going to pay for the bill with money you're not going to pay ki kiska paisa hai uh and then eventually at a later stage i think uh, that matters that who is investing in you because uh, that also builds a profile for the company I I remember when Amoeba Capital came on board uh, you know we received a lot of emails from investors that had missed out on that round uh with saying oh shit we should have you know come in mm-hmm. uh so it's all about yeah and nothing's temporary i mean i always tell everyone you know nothing's temporary uh you know sometimes you, you know investors chase you sometimes you chase the investors and uh, it's a process yaar yeah. i mean there are good days bad days just enjoy whatever's there just smile at the end of the day so to i i think rolling with the punches at the end of the day is, is the most important part right yeah. and and i mean i've always said that that eventually uh, you're going to have passive investors and you're going to have active investors and yeah. and you need to understand the motivation of each person coming into your into your story yeah and so uh, you know if you're going to bring up if you're going to bring an active investor but then treat him as passive money you're yeah. obviously doing something incorrect and you're Absolutely. going to have issues over there and if you're going to bring a passive investor and expect him to be active Yeah. Your cap table. Then again, that again, you're, you're you know you're yep. you're making a mistake. Yep. Good. So just me before before I move into rapid fire, I, I believe are you guys are you guys raising what's the you know what's what's the uh, yep. uh, the future for the company right now? So we we just recently closed the fundraising plan. Yeah. So we are we will start raising in the next couple of months. Uh, it's going to be a okay. much size, sizable round. Uh, it's it's going to be largely a growth round where we also. not just invest in uh, you know getting shops online but we also invest in supply chain that we recently started so we not just help shops go online but we also help them with supply at cheaper cost 
so I think that's uh, one of the things that we've been building for the longer time. Uh, and that's the longer vision as well is like, you know, not just be a digitization kind of a channel, but also be, you know, someone that the, the shops depend on you for, which is supply. Uh, and when you control the supply, you literally control the life cycle. Uh, so I think uh, add more value to the sellers as much as you can. And that's what, uh, you know, because for us, our sellers are like our Ola driver. They're not just driving the car and maintaining it. Our sellers bring the products, they sell it, they sell, sell it like a sales yep. man. They, they bargain with the buyers and they, they're very happy to sell it. So I think, uh, you know, these are, these are, uh, these are interesting times. Uh, COVID definitely opened a lot of doors for us. Uh, it's also exposed a lot of vulnerabilities for us. Uh, and I think uh, it's all about, uh, you know, keep on doing what you're doing and keep on changing while you're at it. So, yeah. So being flexible and being dynamic is, is the name of the game. Absolutely. I mean, no one knows everything, right? I mean, I don't, I personally, I don't know everything. I'm still learning every day. Uh, like yesterday, I learned some new FDI laws. Uh, so, so the point is we've been, we've been learning something new. <laughs> we, we all did in the last few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, in fact, I, 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 this time I learned something very interesting. I'll tell you offline. <laughs> okay, good. So just me, you know what, we're going to, we have about, uh, about seven minutes left Yeah. and I've, I've got a list. So we're going to start a small section towards the end. We're going to call it the rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you about 10 questions You to just think, you know, without thinking, right. And I, I know that is, it's easy for you because you, you're one of those guys that wears his heart on his sleeve. So we're going to yeah. ask you questions, just whatever comes to mind. Uh, right. So are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Stretch out a little bit. I'll just make okay. my hair because I've got cool. like First question. Oh, this long hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No haircut, man. <laughs> First question. Yeah. No. Uh, well, you know, maybe Kutlu should try that. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, no. An essential. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not, not our space. So first question. Yeah. Let me, let me yeah. go with it. Yeah. Rapid fire question number one. What do you know now that you wish you would have known earlier? That, uh, not everyone knows everything. So what do you say becomes the story? One piece of advice that you received in your journey as an entrepreneur that you still follow? Um, Relook at yourself every night before you sleep. What have you done today? Biggest advice to founders about fundraising? It's a storyteller, be Shah Rukh Khan. It's a story, sorry? It's a story. Be Shah Rukh Khan. I mean, just say it be, in a much Shah Rukh Khan. Wow, that, that, that's original. I have not heard that one. But yeah, it's so true though. Yeah. Yeah, always, always be selling yeah. the story. Don't be selling share. Don't be selling, you know, in, in, when we were selling door to door, we used to call it sell the sizzle, not the meat. Right? That's true. And that's true. if you can sell the sizzle, that's what really counts. Yeah. Uh, good. One piece of advice that sounded good when you heard it as a founder, but yeah. ended up being extremely bad advice. Uh, don't change yourself. I think that's the worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you follow it? <laughs> no, I never followed it. <laughs> I think I followed it. I followed it. I, I, don't, I, I agree. I don't think you did. I, but I did not. But uh, So what are you doing when you're not building Kutlu? Uh, I think I'm traveling the world. I think uh, I find uh, you know time between when I go to work and come back to India, I just find time between going to new places. I think I love that. I love that. Good. Good. And uh, where do you see Kootloot in the next one year? I think... Uh, That's the vision statement now. I, I mean, we're already in the top 30 e-commerce apps in India. I think uh, uh, you'll definitely hear more about us. Uh, we, 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 we'll probably have a much bigger impact than we currently do. Uh, we are at about 4 lakh sellers. Uh, we'll probably be more than 15 lakh sellers in the next one year. Wow. And where do you see yourself in five years? Where is, where is Kukluru going to be? We were, if, if everything works out well, uh, we're going to we're gonna be the Shopify of India. Fantastic. Wow. That's good. I mean, so an IPO and everything I'm expecting. Hopefully. Hopefully. So, so I'm holding on to my shares. I'm not giving up in, on any second deal. I hope you don't. Yeah, I, I, but but you gotta let me ring the bell with you whenever you go to whether, whether it's BSC or Nasdaq. You have to take me on for sure. And I, I won't sell my shares. I, I promise you, okay. we will have a few sure. shots before we get there. Oh yeah, sure. I'm sure. Can we do a short one? Let's talk about it later. Okay. 
<laughs> if an if an if if an investor can provide one value to you besides the money, yeah, what would it be? His contacts. Get into the system. Everything is about so, contacts. Get into his address book, man. Just get him to introduce you to the right people, and you never know what what can happen. I always see party hard driver gets so excited when we start talking about drinking. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one thing you would like to change about the Mumbai startup ecosystem? Guys, get the ego out. We're all one. We're all. Uh, we're all in the same mess man i mean i mumbai doesn't even have a eco start a bigger system i'll be very honest to you uh and it it it's a good and bad thing so in bangalore what i see in the startup eco system everyone just competing with each other are ye ye kar raha hai main bhi ye karunga it's like wo building ki padosan uh, right but in mumbai <laughs> uh, but in mumbai i think we don't have a startup ecosystem as i mean we have it but it's not evolved uh, but yeah i mean guys let it loose man like like you never know what we can build together uh you know so yeah yeah i i do sense that the, that a collaborative approach is is always lacking right i mean yeah uh, we're always in a game of up one upmanship right whether and, and I, it's not just about founders i think i see i see the same thing in angel investors see, see the same thing maybe yeah, yeah. even in funds and uh, we need to get better as as a pack right and yeah. I, i always notice that the chinese always hunt in a pack and uh, we try to be the lone always. you know the lone wolf always. right and i always. think that's something that for, for all of us to learn and uh, i think you know one of the one of the things that uh, you know they do is they have these learning sessions on wechat so they will have they will introduce, they will get someone from outside and that guy will do like a learning session on all the founders can ask them questions and it's beautiful it's, oh, wow. it's just okay. amazing it's amazing it's just amazing good i think that's something that we that we, we might uh, need to look at as well yeah yeah uh, good so this is a bit of a dream sequence for you If you could pick the brains of one founder for twenty four hours, who would it be? Any uh, founder, you can choose whoever you want. I living, think Ashneer from or... Ashneer from Bharat Pay. I met him once, and uh, that guy knew his shit, man. He knew his shit. In fact, we are doing something with them. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should. Uh, I could probably make that happen. Yeah, yeah, probably. Probably make that happen. Yeah, good. Cool. Uh, and what what would you like to learn from him? From from him. uh so that yeah, guy is, okay. uh, uh so that you know uh, i met him about like 3 3 months ago uh and you know he gave me a, uh, you know he told me about the startup ecosystem and he's been the uh, he's been worked with growers before and he's worked with really big startups and what bharat pay is becoming such a small time is interesting he said you know what you don't need to innovate you just need to channelize and that's what bharat pay does it has not innovated what it does is it actually aggregates phone pay google pay all the big pays on a single sticker that's it it's just so simple honestly speaking <laughs> it's uh, bharat pay so i have a lot of companies my anti portfolio that but open and i've got you know yeah uh, raw pressery you you yeah. got i've got uh, zoom car all of these guys the yeah. one that hurts the most is bharat, bharat pay. pay yeah and i i wrote i wrote an mm-hmm. i mean i wrote an article for mint recently about maybe 3 yeah. or 4 months ago and i just said you know the, the thing was i was in the middle of making this fund and i didn't have time to meet them yeah. if i ever met them i think just with the with the kind of infectious energy that they have it's right? crazy and the fact that a back founder that in the past i would have definitely been on you know, that table it didn't matter can, even if it was just one can, share can i can i can i tell you something uh, when you look at bharat pay's office from outside you you can't even imagine that it's going to be a billion dollar startup it's it's just that and when you actually go and meet the meet the founders uh you know you're like whoa man you guys are substance inside and that's not a very delhi thing by the way <laughs> so uh you know i was i was surprised when, <laughs> I, i was surprised when i when i met ashneer and i was like amazing it was just one phone call i had with him and he's like ek kaam kar kal flight pakad ke aa jao so i was like okay <laughs> uh a book that you're reading right now So uh, I think eighty eighty. I lost you in between. A book that you are reading right now. What's uh, a book you're reading right now? I am not reading any book right now. <laughs> I'll be very honest to you. <laughs> oh man! I wish I could make you take a shot for that. Okay, but <laughs> what what what's what's a book that? Um... <laughs> okay, what what's what's a book that you would recommend for founders? I mean, there was a question on this as well. Uh, okay. Is there a book that you would recommend for founders to read 
so uh, so i i, I don't Maybe i don't one read, of the ones you yeah. no so i i don't i don't read a lot of books i do watch a lot of uh, ted videos i do watch a lot of case studies uh, that's that's something that resonates with me because i'm a more of a image kind of a person than a reading kind of a person so that works for me so i do i do watch a lot of the journeys of you know companies founders uh, even ted videos anything you know innovative so recently i, I read about this mitti cool which is a refrigerator made out of clay pot oh yeah yeah i remember this one yeah yeah, yeah. so i think uh, what and and one book that i had read that i really loved was called jugard innovation uh yes. and that i think that book was was so me i mean you know it's all about you know i can so see that book being you actually yeah so yeah i completely agree that book is so you yeah so it was it was all about you know fixing the tapes everywhere jahan pe toota tape se bandho bandit laga aur isko chalao and phir baad mein dekhenge part change baad mein karenge so it's it's always about that so so i mean it's so for anybody who's listening it's not always about reading all the books sometimes you know reading books and you can always find it's about gaining knowledge and you can go you can gain knowledge from anywhere right Yeah. Uh, whether it's a TED talk, whether it's audio books, whether it's uh, podcasts, blogs, I follow a lot of blogs, for example. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very interesting. Uh, so I think uh, anything you want to say uh, before we end the show for today? I think uh, you me. know this was this was great. I mean, uh, AD has always been, and you know, I hope to see you as a part of the journey as always. You know, we are offline. We're also great buddies. Uh, when we've had like a great. you know uh, thing going for ourselves but i think uh, you know for everyone that you know is starting up or wants to start up uh, you know i always say that you know there's nothing to lose man just give it a shot you know you will always regret what if that what if part you know you want to get an answer to that i think what if i would have done that what if i would have done that i mean no one's stopping you it's a free world uh, you know we live in a age where everything's available to us uh, internet's available to us you know devices are available to us for cheap uh but you know don't start a startup just for the glory part of it you know because after a point uh, you would you will probably start hating the whole thing and uh, you know do it if you really can grind yourself uh, it's not a glorious journey i mean for to everyone who thinks it's a glorious journey no it is not it is probably you know a real real tread kind of a it's it's, it's a marathon and uh, in this marathon i think you'll you'll bruise yourself you lose a few people uh you know you you'll hurt your back lose a few teeth yeah you'll you lose a few teeth you you'll go through everything you'll go through nights when you don't want to wake up the next day but uh, trust me every day is different and that's why i do this uh and that's why my team does it because um, uh we we believe that we can create something that can change things and if if you believe in you know an impact driven business and you think your business can drive impact don't start a startup by the thing ki main paisa kamaunga and stuff like oh main paise wala ban jaunga main bill gates ban jaunga possible hi nahi hai yaar ek hi sachin tendulkar hai ek hi bill gates hai so the point is uh, you know just do be yourself be honest to yourself uh be be true and just have fun while you're at it and there's uh, nothing to lose man there's nothing to lose just have fun So I think that's a great way to end 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 the uh, end the show for today, guys. Be yourself. There's only one Sachin Tendulkar. There'll only be one Bill Gates. And I and you know what? In the future, I hope uh, five years from now, when I'm doing the show, uh, we're gonna say there was only one Jasmeet Thind. Amen. And, uh, so thank you so much, <laughs> Jasmeet, for being on the show. Thank you. Really Adish. enjoyed uh, the interaction right. as always. Same and right. uh, while you could not share a drink tonight, that, I definitely look awesome. forward that once we're done. With uh, with 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 the lockdown, we're yeah. safely allow you know safely with enough social distancing allowed to to uh, meet each other in a bar. We'll be dancing again for sure and, and having a bunch of fun for sure, man, for sure. As thank I you do. very much, everybody. Good night, Jasmeet. Thank you, thank you so Take much, Jasmeet. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. bye.